Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, please about your friends. And today we are going to share a story, supposedly it is something Jesus did. Now just to make sure before we start, this is an Islamic story, we approve zero of it. But we will use it and discuss it. Before we start, I want to say Happy Easter for those who celebrate according to the Orthodox calendar. And if you ask me, I believe the Orthodox calendar is the correct one when it's come to the Easter and even to the uh, uh, Christmas time. Every year <clears throat> in the Sabbath, a light comes from the empty tomb of our Lord as a miracle. And many countries who they have a huge population of Orthodox, they send airplanes to carry this fire around to the world. From Russia to Ukraine to Romania to Greece, uh, Moldova, etc. And this is something happen every year. And for sure the Muslims will not believe in it. And you yourself, you don't have to believe in it. You know, for us, we do not need a fire to believe in Jesus. But it's just an initial miracle happen every year. And nobody can explain, but the Muslim can explain it to you. They say the Christians, they are lighting a fire there inside, you know, secretly, etc. Uh, you can watch those videos by searching them in YouTube. Uh, you can search the ones for the last few hours ago. They just posted them. And you will see the celebration if you are interested. For me, I am a believer, regardless if there is a fire or not. All right. So happy Easter for all those who celebrate the Orthodox calendar. And again, I believe this is the correct calendar. And this is additional proof of it is being correct. That this light come only in such a date. Now we go to the topic, which is who the story of Jesus and the third loaves. You see the Muslims. Uh, oh, hold on. Before I talk about the uh, Islam. There was a, an atheist in the chat before we go live, like if, about 20 minutes ago. And he was speaking about, uh, you know, uh, how come Christianity approved, the Bible approved slavery? You know, here I like, I like to say to the atheist, I never saw somebody approve slavery as much as you do atheist. Everything you do is racist, is a slavery, it is anti-human. It is you who enslave a nation, it's called China. And you force them even how many babies they can have. This is a slavery. You force them to believe in a party they don't want to believe in, and this is slavery. You force them to do what they don't want to do, and this is a slavery. And this is the same as Soviet Union. It is you who adopt a slavery, but you change the name of it. Same time, when you say slavery in the Bible, why did Jesus have slaves? How many slaves he owned? When you say the Bible approves slavery. If you are talking about the law of Moses, this is a law that exists thousands of years ago. When the Jews themselves, they were slaves. The whole nation were enslaved. So this is a law deal with the situation they have. It's not a law approving slavery. And actually, according to the Hebrew law, a person, he can give himself as a slave a return of a debt he own so he can work maximum as a slave for the person for seven years him and his family so he come to the owner or let's say you, you borrow money from somebody you say to him i cannot pay you but me and my wife my daughter my son we, we are willing to be your slave for the coming seven year maximum this is the law to pay you back So don't talk about slavery. You are a person who followed Darwin, who put a black person in a cage to prove that the origin of monkeys are black. Shame on you, actually. We should forbid this filthy Darwin from being in a school. And this is how showing you how the hypocrite, the atheists are. They say they wanna, we wanna take the statues of Columbus. Why? Uh, Columbus, he invaded America. Uh -oh. They have Darwin in every book of their books, and they are so proud of him. And he is a person who put a black African person in a cage. 
So don't school people about freedom and about human, humane. You are you are anti-human. You are the one who support abortion and killing babies. Now, just I wanted to give a spank for this atheist who he think he is better than the rest. Stalin, he used to execute 5,000 people at least every morning. And if the number is less than five to sign, he get upset. Why it is less than 5,000? Shall I tell you about the leader of North Korea? He's an atheist like you. Wonderful people. If we start counting those who they are atheists and they are in charge, you will see that they are doing what is hell. So don't come to us and play that you are the, 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 the decent human. Atheism brought nothing have a value to mankind. Shall I tell you about Bill Gates? He want to dim the sun. They think they own the whole universe. They tell us what to do. They want to control us just because they own a software company. Now, the story in the front of us, this is a good spank for the atheist, right? We don't talk about you, atheist, because you are so silly even to mention you. What I will talk about you? I will say that you, you want to call me and debate me that you, your grand, grand, grand ancestor was a monkey? Okay, you win. You are a monkey already. Shall I bring you a banana? What we can say to the atheist? I mean, this atheism is a stupid thing. If an atheist, he called me right now and he want to debate me to prove to me that there's no God. You idiot. How you can, how there's no God and you want to prove that there's no God. You cannot prove something not to be exist if it's not exist. Even the ideas they have is silly and stupid. I don't waste my time with atheists because there's nothing to argue, to debate about. I believe that your ancestor, they used to be chicken too. You are right. You won the debate. What we would debate about? When once we have this guy with his name, Samir Abdullah, ex-Muslim. So we showed him a verse from the Bible. It says in the translation there, the circle of the earth. He said the, the circle is flat. I mean, do you see the stupidity? Circle can be flat if there is an earth with edges of a flat earth. Now I can say there is edges for the earth, like, you know, the, the, to the end of the world. But doesn't mean really I mean it this way. It's mean, you know, metaphorically to the end of the world. But it says it's like a sprawl, like it's like a, a, like a globe. Some translation says circle. You see, when it says the earth is like a circle, as an example, that's mean all the earth, not only one line. Because if it's only one line, that would not make it a circle. That would make it a coin. And then the coin in the shape of a circle. But when I say the earth, all of it is a circle, that's mean in every direction, it is a circle. But because they love to go in denial, even the verse says, who hang the earth on nothing, in the space, empty space, how far we can go. And you see, we do not need science to prove our God. Because your science could not even find a stupid virus called Corona. If a stupid tiny virus is not even that strong, did that to you. <coughs> Where is your science? Where is your computer? Where is your doctor? Oh, don't remind me of Dr. Fucci. Fucci Bucci. The guy who says something, it, this guy Fuchi is the same as Muhammad. He says something in the morning, he says the opposite afternoon. In the morning, there is no need for a mask. Afternoon, he says there is a mask. We don't approve of stupidity. And we believe that you are stupid. However, if you are an atheist and you want to, you know, step, like we offer the guy to call me, he says, not today. Oh, don't come here then again. 
Who ate the three loaves of bread? I want you to listen carefully. If you are a Christian, if you are a Jew, if you are a Hindu, if you are a Muslim, and try not to laugh. We are not going to laugh at uh, the person they are mentioning there. We are laughing at the fabricated story. And the funny you ask the Muslims, where this story came from? They said to you, this is Israeliyat, made by the Israeli, you idiot. The Israeli don't believe in Jesus. You forgot that? They accused the Jews of everything. In the same time, they believe it. Let us hear the story together. Upon a time that Jesus, peace be upon him, gave some money to one of his companions and he told him to go into town and get some food for everybody. And uh, the man took the money, he went into a town close by, bought the food. There wasn't very much money and all he was able to buy was three loaves of bread. And he was very, very hungry. And he realized that there was just these three loaves of bread. So he decided to eat one loaf of the bread himself. And then when he got back, he just handed the bread over to Jesus, who asked him, who ate the third loaf of bread? Stop. So guys, Jesus, okay, Isa, I don't know why he's even saying Jesus. You Muslim don't have Jesus. What Jesus? Isa. Isa, he told one of his disciples, hey, Abdul, go and buy us some bread. And he gave him money. The Abdul, who is the companion of Isa, he went and he bought three loaves of bread. Notice with me number three. Again. I mean, it happened that the money which is given by Isa to the companion, it can buy only three loaves of bread. It happened. Things happened, brother. And then this Abdul who accompany uh, uh, Isa, obviously he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim uh, Isa, you know. And the, uh, the, his company is Muslims. Or they are Muslim. This is why the guy who stole the bread explained that, you know, because it's okay. It's halal, you know. Uh, Muhammad, he used to do the same. And the Muslim, they say he is a sadiqul amin. He is the trustworthy. He is a trustworthy to the point when you send him to the house of his own son, he flirts with the wife when the husband is not there. So now the guy, he went there and he bought three loaves of bread. And then he said to himself, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. So he ate one loaf. He came back to Isa and Isa says to him, uh, Isa, Aka Jesus. Where is the third one? Like, what? Hey, Muslims, how Isa knew that there was a third one? Isn't it you, Muslim, you say that only Allah knows the unseen? How he knew that there's a third one? Continue the story. And immediately the man said, but there are only two loaves of bread. And Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, didn't say anything else, but they continued on the journey with their companions. Later on, the companions seated, ex succeeded in hunting uh, a deer, and they killed the deer, and they were cooking it and eating from the deer. Then Jesus, peace be upon him, he stood up and he asked Allah to bring the deer back to life. And in less than a second, the deer... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, Abdul. So they hunted the deer to eat him. Why they want to bring him back to life? I mean, do you see the story, how it work? We hunted a deer to eat the deer. Why we want to bring the deer to life? And where was Isa hunting a deer in Pennsylvania? They hunted a deer, brother. They are hunters. 
So we just killed the deer, and now we are going to ask Isa to bring the deer into life? Why? Is that like a short time? Hey, Isa, do this for us. You know, show us what you can do, okay? <laughs> show us, yeah. <laughs> Isa, you, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> what a stupid religion. I will finish your career, debate me. You did already, my friend. By saying such a statement, it's already proven that you are stupid. Get out of here. To bring the deer back to life. And in less than a second, the deer jumped back up and ran away. Oof. And the people were amazed that how could this deer that we just killed, and we cooked him, and we were eating him, and then suddenly he just... The deer is being cooked. Listen carefully. The deer, not only they hunted the deer, not only they skinned the deer, not only they cut the meat of the deer, they cooked the deer. The deer is in the soup. The deer is a shish kebab. And now Jesus told the deer to jump from the soup and became one piece and his bingo like boing, boing, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm the deer, I'm the deer, I'm the deer. <laughs> what? No, no, tell us more. Slowly, please. Slowly. What happened? Killed the deer and they were cooking it and eating from the deer. Then Jesus, peace be upon him, he stood up and he... Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. So now they are eating from the deer. What about the meat who is inside their belly? I ate from the deer, like I, I took one pound of the meat in my stomach. And now Jesus resurrecting the deer. So what happened to the meat in my stomach? Does it come from their mouth too? Like, or if they come out? <laughs> they are eating from the deer. <laughs> asked Allah to bring the deer back to life. He asked Allah. You see? The funny they say that this is a story the, the Muslim they learn from from the, from the Jews. The Jews they uh, they, they, they say Jesus ask Allah. <laughs> hey Allah, I mean, how come it's so easy to this Isa? I mean, it's so easy. He ask Allah, the deer is cooked, he bring him back. Muhammad, his mother is dead, he can't bring her back. His son died. According to Muslim, he have a son, which I believe this is not true. He could not bring him to life. He is dying himself. He could not bring himself to life. Jesus, you bring him a deer. You cut him. They cut the deer pieces. You cook him. You make him a, a, a sauce, soup, and then you eat in him. You are eating the deer, and then deer says, "There's Allah. Make the deer alive." And bingo, the deer is alive. How easy to Jesus to do things, brother. Those things only happen with Jesus. Tell us more, useless state. And in less than a second, the deer jumped back up and... A second, brother. Less than a second. Look about the timing. It did not even take time. Did not even take a second. It's a less than a second. The soup became a deer again. You have to admit, Jesus is very fast. Tell us more, what happened? Ran away, and the people were amazed. That they were amazed, or now they are starving hungry? They, are, they want to eat, supposedly, and they start eating, and now the deal is gone, so what they will do? If I am there and someone make the deer I'm eating rain away, I will shoot the guy who made the deer run away. He just stole our food. What do we eat now? They were a means, brother. Hmm. How could this deer that we just killed, and we cooked him, and we were eating him, and then suddenly he just jumps up and runs away? <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So then Jesus looked at the man who had gone after the bread, and he said, I'm asking you by the one who brought this deer back to life. Who ate the third loaf of bread? 
Look at this drama. Jesus, he want to know who ate the third loaf of bread. This is the whole story is about. So now the guy, he ate the thir third loaf of the bread. Jesus, he knew. He knew things. And now he made this miracle. And the guy who ate the third loaf of the bread, he's there. So Jesus showed him, look what I can do. Now tell me. Who ate the third loaf of the bread? <laughs> what an investigation. <laughs> okay. Man who had gone after the bread. And he said, I'm asking you by the one who brought this deer back to life. Who ate the third loaf of bread? And immediately the man said, there were only two loaves of bread. Again, Jesus, peace be upon him, did the same thing. Look how patient Jesus upon peace be upon him. By the way, they don't say they don't say Al Masih sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say Al Masih alayhi salam, peace be upon him. So when the Muslim they, they translate that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is blessing on Muhammad, that is a fabrication. This is why they didn't use it to anyone. They say Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah pray on him and salute him. They don't say after the name of the Messiah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did you notice that? Why? Because those people, they worship Muhammad, which he changed his name from Qatham to the praised one because he want to replace Jesus. He want to be the praised one, not Jesus. Continue with the story. So now the guy, he asked him, did you eat the loaf of the bread? He denied or say, no, he did not say to him, did you eat the loaf of the bread? He says, who ate the third loaf of the bread? The guy, he said, I told you, there's only two loaves of the bread. Who brought this deer back to life? Who ate the third loaf of bread? And immediately the man said, there were only two loaves of bread. Again, Jesus, peace be upon him, did the same thing. And they continued on their journey. Now, while they were walking, they came across a river that had been flooded up. And Jesus, peace be upon him, asked them to hold his hand. So everybody joined hands with him and they were able to walk across the top of the river. Look, to cover this thing. I mean, you see, the most thing they say to us, why you believe that Jesus is God? Listen carefully. The Muslims, they say to us, what make you believe that Jesus is God? Okay, he's not. But look how easy to walk in the water. Jesus told his companion, they want to cross the river. He says, hold my hand. And he took him, took all the companion with him, and all of them, they are walking in the water. Very normal. Those things happen every day. If Allah is the one who made Jesus walk in the water, why he don't make all the prophet walk in the water? I saw once a video, uh, I think uh, maybe Zach and I, a brother and sister, they asked him, why prophet Jesus have a lot of miracle? In the time of Jesus, the miracle, it was a response to the advanced science of medicine. At that time, medicine was very advanced. So Jesus has given a miracle of Like What science advanced you idiot? We are now in the year 2021, and yet we cannot fight the stupid virus Corona. So Jesus, 2000 years ago, at that time, the people, they have advanced science. Why did Jesus give medicine? When Jesus walked in the water, what does this have to do with medicine? When Jesus, he made the dead man come from the grave, did he give him a medicine? Hey, dead man, take this bill in the morning. I want you to take it three times a day, okay? And then after one week, you will come back to my <laughs> They cannot explain. So they come with the stupid answers. And now again, here we go. Come on, Muslim worship. Muhammad, you lie? No, you, I can prove it easy. 
Here we go. Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah and his angels and the Muslims, all they pray on Muhammad. So who is the God? The center of the universe is Muhammad. Allah, angels, believers, everybody doing one thing, praying on Muhammad. So who is the God? Hmm? Take your time to give me the answer. It should be the opposite. It should be Muhammad and the believers and the angels praying to Allah. Not Allah and the angels and the believers praying on Muhammad. And this is what the Muslim, he says to us, the dead boy, he says it means he pray for, not to. Who care? Pray for? That is even more horrible. So now Jesus, he hold the hands of his disciples and they walk above the water. What happened next? Tell us more. To hold his hand. So everybody joined hands with him and they were able to walk across the top of the river and walk all the way to the other side. When they got to the other side, the, the people were amazed, you know. How, how could this be? He said to this same man again, he said, I'm asking you, by the one, <laughs> in other words, I'm asking you, by the one who made it for us to be able to cross this river by walking on top of it, who ate the third loaf of bread? And immediately he said, listen, there were only two loaves of bread. <laughs> That's it. Isa stuck with the third loaf of the bread. So now we cook the deer. And Isa made the deer come back to life after he'd been cooked and almost been eating all of it. And after doing this miracle, he did not say, oh, Lord, did you see what I did? He looked at the guy who bought the bread. Where is the third loaf of the bread? The guy says, Isa, I told you, there's no root at the third loaf, okay? Then Isa keep walking and then they arrive to a river. And now he made everybody walk with him in the top of the water. They passed the river. Now Isa, he stopped. He said to the guy, where is the third loaf of the bread? <laughs> uh, this is a very loofy drama. I mean, this drama is about the loaves of the bread. Okay. So Jesus, he didn't say anything again, and they went on. Then they came to a desert, and that's when Jesus, peace be upon him, took three big piles of sand. Then he asked the law, change this into gold. Like what the heck? Like what? They come to the desert, so where they was, I mean, this is what, I mean, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. They just arrived to the desert, like, is something you arrive by airplane? <laughs> Somebody told those Abdul that Jesus used to live in Indonesia. And now he crossed the river, he became in the desert. Like the desert in the light of the river and the, the paradise and the lift of the... What is that? He arrived to the desert. How you can do that? This is a trip of one day. We just sent the guy to buy a loaf of the bread. And now they arrive to the desert. When you hear somebody, my friend, don't repeat the same question again. I I believe I don't I don't celebrate a day, my friend. I celebrate. I believe that tomorrow already we are in the Easter according to the Orthodox calendar. I believe this is the correct calendar. I just say that already. Don't repeat the same question. For me, I believe every day is a Sabbath for the Lord. The day of the Easter will not be will never be repeated, but we celebrate an occasion.
So don't repeat yourself one million times. So now we are in the desert. When somebody arrived at the desert, what he should do? He should make water. Not gold. Who need gold in the desert? What for? And, he, and they went on. Then they came to a desert. And that's when Jesus, peace be upon him, took three big piles of sand. Then he asked the law, change this into gold. And this man was watching this. And suddenly, the piles of sand became... Look, this, supposedly this is Jesus. Look at his beard. This is Jesus, brother. This is Taliban Jesus. He looked like a Taliban for me. Hmm. So Jesus, he asked Allah to make the sand gold. And Allah right away, he do whatever Jesus want. He Allah, make it gold, okay? <laughs> so sure. And I'm your genie. I mean, this guy, Jesus, he never asked for anything. And Allah say no. How come in the Quran, the Arab, they keep begging Muhammad for a miracle. And Muhammad, he says, Allah refrain from sending miracle because former generation don't believe in them. How come with this Isa, Allah, he receiving orders from Isa and they never say no. Let us go to the Quran. Chapter 17, verse number 59. Look at this translation. Not, not, what? I think those Muslim translators, they use Google translation. I mean, they copy the text in Arabic, they post it there, bingo. And he refrained from sending signs only because men of former generation treated them as false. And by the way, this is after the chapter of the moon, which means the moon chapter was sent before it. So how the moon is split, it's a miracle, and the verse saying we refrain. See the stupidity? So Allah refrain from sending signs of what excuse people don't believe in it really. But don't the Christians believe in the miracles of all the prophets? For sure, Muhammad is not a prophet. And the proof in front of you, you have no proof. You will find Muhammad have a uh, have a miracle in stories written in Islamic books, but the Quran there's no miracles which is a proven that those stories are fabrication. Because if the Quran mentioning miracles Jesus did, how come Muhammad, he has zero miracle in the Quran? And Allah, he says, we refrain from sending miracles. The Arab keep asking Muhammad, why he don't bring us a sign from his God so we can believe? All what they are asking for, a sign, proof. That's very normal Any, because anyone can say and claim to be that he's a prophet. Chapter 6, verse number 37, chapter 10, verse number 20, chapter 13, verse number 7, chapter 13, 27. All of them they say, Why his God don't send him a sign, a miracle? Or would they want to see a miracle? Zero miracle. So how come Jesus in two hours a trip, he made tons of miracles? He walked in water. He was wrecked the deer after being be cooked. And now he made the sand gold. All of this for the sake of one loaf. For the sake of what? Of one loaf. So Muhammad the Prophethood, proof, is dependent in one sign. 
Allah he will send to prove that he is a prophet, yet Allah cannot do it. When it's come to Isa, miracles come like rain. Every hour or two, there's a miracle. We cook the deer, the deer come back to life. We went across the river, we walk on the water. We saw the sand, we make a three pile of gold. Do you see how easy it is? Okay, use this estate. He said his wife, she used to call him useless. And this is why he became a Muslim, so he can get a good salary and he got a job. This guy, this is what he do for a living now. Suddenly he became a sheik. <laughs> his wife called him useless. <laughs> living in welfare. All right. So use this estate. He is telling you now how Jesus made three pile of sand all of them gold and what is the target he want to know why this guy lying about eating the third loaf i never thought about the third loaf like this before from now on i'm going to take it seriously and say anything again and they went on then they came to a desert and that's when Jesus, peace be upon him, took three big piles of sand. Then he asked the law, change this into gold. And this man was watching this. And suddenly, the piles of sand became piles of gold. True story, brother. And he said, one pile is for me. And he looked at the man and he said, one pile is for you. And the third hold on hold on hold on jesus told the guy one piled for me and one piled for what about the rest <laughs> and what jesus would do with one pile of sand became gold <laughs> how he can carry it <laughs> i think at that time jesus was driving a big truck Hey guys, this is the pile is for me. Okay, put it in my truck. Okay, <laughs> true story, brother. So he said to him, "What one pile for me?" Jesus says that. That's when Jesus, peace be upon him, took three big piles of sand. Then he asked the law, "Change this into gold." And this man was watching this, and suddenly the piles of sand became piles of gold true story and he said one pile is for me and he looked at the man and he said one pile is for you and the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread <laughs> look at this bingo look at this a trick In order for Jesus to make him confess his, his, his doing, he said, listen, we made three piles of gold. One for me, brother. One for you, brother. And the third one is for the one who ate the third loaf. <laughs> Don't forget that in the two minute ago he says that the he, him and his disciples they walk over the river what happened to the disciples they are gone you know what maybe he dumped them in the river suddenly it is only jesus and this guy okay go back and became piles of gold and he said one pile is for me and he looked at the man and he said, one pile is for you. And the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. The man quickly said, I'm the one who ate the third loaf of bread. And Jesus... Look at this genius, Isa. He said, the third one will be for the one who ate the third loaf of the bread. The guy, he said, it's me, you idiot. You idiot. If I go now in the middle of the town and I say, if you confess that you are the one who ate the third 
loaf of the bread, you will take a pile of gold. Do you know how many hundred of thousand they will confess their sin? <laughs> What is the proof that he is the one who ate it? Because he said, I am the one who ate it now because you want to get the gold? Well, this is what all people would do. Go downtown and put in the front of a million people a pile of gold and say, hey, who want to who, who wanna admit that he ate the third loaf? All of them do admit. <laughs> <laughs> my friend they will admit even for the sake one pound of gold not one uh, for the sake of one coin of gold not for the sake of pile of gold what's wrong with those people do you see the stupidity Everybody will say, I am the one who ate the, the you know, especially those uh, YouTubers, the decent uh, Abdul and Muhammad. So now he told him, uh, I feel like crying. Don't compare before to now, brother. <laughs> Why before they don't like gold? Well, if, peop if people before they don't like gold, isn't it you Muslims, you go and do jihad to get a bracelet of gold, a house, one brick of gold, one brick of silver, one brick of gold, one brick of silver. This is why you worship Allah for the sake of gold and sex. Don't compare between this before and now, brother. Why before people don't like gold? Before people, they were wealthy? Before people, they were dying, slavery, hunger, or, you know, you name it. Amazing story, brother. One pile is for you and the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread the man quickly said i'm the one who ate the third loaf of bread yes brother, that's me and jesus told him then all three piles of gold are for you look bingo but do not accompany now now he gave him the three pile of gold it's okay it's okay now take the three pile of gold but just don't stay with us okay leave us anymore so don't be with us anymore. But the man didn't do. And the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. The man quickly said, I'm the one who ate the third loaf of bread. And Jesus told him, then all three... You know what, hold on. This will remind me of the story. Do you remember the story we read once in the Shia Pan website? This is from Muslim Books, Muslim Sunni. That there is a, there is a guy after they killed Uthman the caliphate a muslim guy he says if i know who called uthman i'm going to do boom boom to him he used the f word a homosexual he heard him and he said i am the one who killed uthman and he bent over and then the guy the muslim guy he started doing boom boom to him then the homosexual from underneath of him according to the story he was screaming saying if i know that king uthman will get me this i would love to kill uthman every day i would love to kill him every day and if you don't believe me the shia this is this is a story translated by the shia in their website and the, the reference of the page and the book is there if I know Uthman, killing Uthman will make me get boom boom from a man, the homosexual said, I would love to kill Uthman every day. Now let us compare this story to that story. If I know eating the third loaf will give me three pile of gold, I would love to eat the third loaf every day. <laughs> Oof. 
Lovely. Even my stomach is talking. I want to eat the deer, which uh, they cooked and they became alive again. <laughs> And the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. The man quickly said, I'm the one who ate the third loaf of bread. And Jesus told him, then all three piles of gold are for you, but do not accompany us anymore. But the man didn't care. He was so happy he sat down in front of his new fortune and he started dreaming of what he was going to do with it. He was smiling all alone, looking at his wealth. Suddenly three thieves came upon him and they saw here's a man sitting alone with this huge treasure of gold. First thing they did, they killed him. Then they divided the gold. Each one of them took one of the big piles of gold. And then they sent one of them to go in and get some food so they could eat and then plan out their future. So one of the thieves, he went to town to buy food. No, he didn't take one of the loaves of bread like the other guy. Instead, he decided to poison the food so when he goes back, the people will eat the poison, they'll die, and he'll get all three. Okay, do you guys do you understand what happened now? Let's go back slowly. So now Jesus, aka Isa, or Isa, aka Jesus, Muhammad even cannot quote the name of Jesus correctly. He come with Isa because he think, that this person who is the son of Maryam, who is she is the sister of Aaron, he is the son of Mary, and that is Esau. Now, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, supposedly she did not get married according to the Old Testament. But there is some they say that she have a, a child and she got married, even though if the Bible did not mention that. Obviously, Muhammad he heard from the Jews' stories that Maryam, the sister of Musa, the sister of Aaron, she have a son, his name is Isa. Or Esau. The Edith Muhammad, he thought this is Maryam, the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus. And the son of that Maryam is Isa, which is Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, here the story getting more complicated. Now Isa he gave the three pile of gold for this guy who ate the third loaf of a bread. Now what happened? After he gave him the third, pour the three pile, the guy start dreaming about what he would do with it. For you, but do not accompany us anymore. But the man didn't care. He was so happy he sat down in front of his new fortune and he started dreaming of what he was going to do with it. He was smiling all alone, looking at his wealth suddenly three thieves came upon him and they saw how many thieves oh, hold on hold on how many thieves they came he muslims who is the one who is so much into the trinity okay so jesus he ordered him to buy bread the guy he bought three loaves of a bread three loaves then Jesus, he made a three pile of gold. Then there's a three thieves, they come. <laughs> ah, I would like to have a three iPad, my brother, and three uh, phones, and three cars, and three horses. I don't want to have three wives because that will bring me three mother-in-law. That is disgusting and scary. <laughs> what? Even the thieves, they were three. I mean, what? Does it hurt if you make them four? I mean, come on. What about five? I mean, why we are stuck with number? Okay, what about you make them 300? <laughs> the Spartan. <laughs> Addiction to number three. And the third pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. The man quick. The third pile will be for the one who ate the third. <laughs> what? The third pile will be for the one who ate the third loaf of the bread. 
And guess what? This story here in the line of the story, it's in the minute three. Unbelievable, it's a miracle. In the minute three, the third pile of the gold will be for the third, the one who ate the third loaf. The pile is going to be for the one who ate the third loaf of bread. The man quickly said, I'm the one who ate the third loaf of bread. And Jesus told him, then all three piles of gold are for you, but do not accompany us anymore. Look beside the music. Look but at the, the music. man didn't care. He was so happy he sat down in front of his new fortune and he started dreaming of what he was going to do with it. He was smiling all alone, looking at his wealth. Suddenly three thieves came Sud upon him and they saw, here's a man sitting alone with this huge treasure of gold. First thing they did, they killed him. Then they divided the gold. Each one of them took one of the big piles. Oh boy. Now they killed the guy who Jesus gave him the three pile of gold. <laughs> you know, this guy, he did not ask himself, how in the hell I'm going to carry those three pile of gold? Let us say I am in the middle of the desert. And but actually, he is in the middle of the desert. And now somebody said to me, he made a three pile of sands. You can imagine how much weight is that? He made all of those piles are gold. We are talking about hills of sand. How is going to carry it anyway? So now he is sitting so happy. He got a three piles of gold. And suddenly, brother, do you see the word suddenly? I don't know, maybe you did not hear it. I like it when the Muhammad and they say suddenly. When they say suddenly, suddenly stupid will increase smiling all alone looking at his wealth suddenly three thieves came upon him i hate it by the way i mean come on i'm sitting in the beach enjoying the gold in the front of me in the middle of the desert you know like in las vegas they have a beach you know it's called the palagio you know it's, it's an ocean and I, I actually i did fishing there too you know i was the only arab fishing in the palagio fountain and people, they were like looking at me, why you are doing that? I said, I'm fishing for coins, you idiot. <laughs> I have magnetic at the end of the road. <laughs> the idiot, they thought I'm fishing for a fish. No. And suddenly, three thieves, they come. Suddenly, in the middle of the desert. In the middle of nowhere. Suddenly. It happened that suddenly it happened to be three. It happened to be three pile of gold. It happened to be three loaf of a bread. It happened. So we can come to conclusion, things happened in Islam. You know what I'm saying? In other way, you know the thing, as Joe Biden, he said. <laughs> but the man didn't care. He was so happy he sat down in front of his new fortune. <laughs> And he started dreaming of what he was going to do with it. He was smiling all alone, looking at his wealth. Suddenly three thieves came upon him and they saw, here's a man sitting alone with this huge treasure of gold. First thing they did, they killed him. Oof. Then they divided the gold. Each one of them took one of the big piles of gold. And then they sent one of them to go in and get some food so they could eat and then plan out their future. So one of the thieves, he went to town. They send, he went to the town. They are in the desert, man. Like, what happened to the desert? Are they in the desert or they are in the town? If we go back, he said, and they arrived to the desert. And now suddenly, they are in the town. Like, what? Are they in the town or they are in the desert, brother? What's wrong with you? The town? Cop town? Um, by food. No, he didn't take one of the loaves of bread. Three thieves came upon him and they saw, here's a man sitting alone with this huge treasure of gold. First thing they did, they killed him. 
Then they divided the gold. Each one of them took one of the big piles of gold. And then they sent one of them to go in and get some food so they could eat and then plan out their future. So one of the thieves, he went to town to buy food. You know, I believe that this is this is a true story for a very simple reason. Three thieves, they sent one of them to buy food. <laughs> you idiot. If there are three thieves, how this thief he will trust the other two thieves when they are thieves to stay with the gold and he go to the town to buy to buy food? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a thief trusting a thief? To be honest? <laughs> Hey brother, you know we are thieves, okay? But now uh, you go and buy us food, and we will wait for you. <laughs> Those are very honest thieves. They trust each other, brother. It's very normal between thieves that they trust each other. They are thieves. They are pirate. So a pirate, he is so stupid to the point he go to buy food and leave other two pirates with such a gold and he trusts them? Like what? True story. Things happen. You know, you like it, you don't like it, things happen. Okay? No, he didn't take one of the loaves of bread like the other guy. Instead, he decided to poison the food so when he goes back, the people will eat the poison, they'll die, and he'll get all three shares of gold for See? himself. Mm, smart. And this is what he did. But his friends, who he'd left behind, were also plotting against him. Mm -hmm. And they decided that when this man comes back, we'll jump him from the two sides, kill him, and then we'll divide up his share of the gold amongst ourselves. So they killed him when he came back, and then they sat down to enjoy their meal. And they ate the poisoned food. And a few minutes later, they both died. Wow. And they all were laying there. When Jesus, peace be upon him, came back. He came back, why? I mean, Jesus, peace be upon you, why you are coming back? <laughs> Is that the highway? <laughs> he just told the guy not to come with the house. And he was going, he left. And now he's coming back. Why? He just left an hour ago, two hours ago. And when Jesus peace be upon him, he came back. Look, what? He's coming back? Why? What for? He forgot his phone there. <laughs> Hold on, I want to listen to it again. And then they sat down to enjoy their meal. And they ate the poisoned food. And a few minutes later, they both died. And they all were laying there. When Jesus, peace be upon him, came back with his companions, they passed by the very same spot. And there they saw their former companion laying on the ground and the other three thieves laying there too all of them dead and all three piles of gold laying there and he pointed to this and he said this is the life of this world in the Arabic called al hayat dunya mm -hmm. this is the life of this world yeah. and this is what it will do for those who seek after it Mean. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you trying to make fun of your prophet because he died because of poison? He attacked the Jews to steal their money and then the Jews, they killed him? Are you saying that Muhammad, he go after the life of this earth? And he is obsessed with money, he attacked the Jews to steal their gold? He tortured the Jewish guy to tell him what is his treasure? He stole the money of the Jews. He took their women, their children, and their gold and their silver. And then the Jews, they killed him like a rat by poison bought from Home Depot. Are you saying that? Shame on you, Yusuf State. 
because this is what happened exactly to your prophet. He ate the third loaf made by the third Jewish women. And then in the minute of three, after he bite the first bite and the second bite, the poison went through him. This is a story about people like Muhammad. They live for gold and vagina. All what they want from this earth is gold and vagina. Why Muhammad is there? Because he attacked them and he, you know, he enslaved the women. The old ones, he made them a cook. The young ones is for sex. The little boys, slaves and the one who have a pubic hair already they slaughter them which mean in the age of 10 and more or 9 which mean they are children this is the truth about islam they fabricate stories why we cannot find this story in the bible muslims why we cannot find those are stories in the Bible. You know, uh, <clears throat> how many times we hear Muslims saying to me, Christian Prince, you're a liar. If I say to you now that Jesus was in the cross, you will say to me, you are a liar. Well, the Quran says someone looked like him in the cross, so it's obviously it's true. If I say to you now, Jesus walked in the water, you will say you are a liar, but we just heard the story, which you Muslims put in a back in a, a ground in music, and you believe in it, that Jesus walked in the water, but it's not in the Quran. Just to show you how fake Muhammad is, he said when you hear stories by the Christians or the Jews, don't tell them you are a liar and don't believe them. Don't accuse them to be false and don't confirm it. Let us say, correct the word. Do you know why Muhammad, he said that? Because he himself is a false prophet. He did not know. And this is showing you that Muslims, they go against their prophet when they say to Christians, you are lying. Because their prophet, he ordered them not to say you are lying. He ordered them, don't verify them, nor falsify them. If it's false, I don't confirm it. Have you ever heard of such a th stupid thing? But anyway, this is a story. Whoever made it, he is suffering from stupidity because all of it is just, not only doesn't make sense, I mean, it's just a stupid scenario. And Jesus come back. Are you Muslim saying that Jesus, he knew the unseen and that would make him God? Jesus knew that there was third loaf. Jesus knew that this person would be killed. Jesus knew that those thieves would die. And Jesus came back because he knew all of those things. So in one hand, you say Jesus is not God. In the other hand, you say us to us a story confirming how easy it is for Jesus to do what God do. He can walk in water. He can resurrect even a cooked deer from the soup not a dead deer a cooked and even they ate some of it
So as you see, those stories are priceless to prove the hypocrisy and the double standards of Islam. And as you see, they inserted in the story that Jesus, he prayed to Allah. Which is very funny. So in order to make Jesus a Muslim, they made a story about Jesus' miracles, which is supposedly he is the one who can do everything. And because Jesus can do everything, so nobody can discuss how he can do it. It's not a secret that Jesus, he can do what nobody can do. So let us make a story about Jesus. And this story is about Jesus asking Allah. But the story have number three all over. The story tells us that Jesus, nothing hard for him to ask for Allah and Allah serving Jesus. In the second, he do what he wish. But yet in the case of Muhammad, Muhammad, he asked Allah for miracles. Miracles never come. It's easy for Jesus to walk in water. He is sure he can do it. Even to make his followers walk with him on the water, he is sure he can do it. And this is what the Muslim story told us. You know, when Jesus walked in the water to cross the river, that remind me of Muhammad jumping in the water which have dead dogs and women blood from period. Let us compare for a second. Jesus across the river, he don't even make his feet, his feet wet. Even it's a clean river. He walk above it. Muhammad, he jump in the water, have dead dogs, women of blood from period, and a stinky garbage. And according to Muslims, Muhammad is the greatest prophet and he is a greater, way greater than Jesus. When their prophet is the garbage boy. A person was walking by, he said to Muhammad, are you performing a pollution in a body of water full of dead dogs? The bodies of dogs. Ministral rags, rags of menstruation, rags of menstruation, and garbage thrown in it. And then a Muslim guy, he will make a video for you about how to fight Corona by fight by following the steps of the Prophet. Go, go, go follow it. I want to see you. Huh? Why in Dubai you don't have a jacuzzi full of dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage in it? Why you have all those shiny stuff, gold, faucet, gold, the money, huh? Now you don't want to have to follow the Prophet? So if you are a Muslim, if you are a Christian, if you are a Hindu, if you are a Jew, I don't know who you are. This is how Jesus, even in the stupid Islam, Jesus is amazing. He walk in water. He turn sand into gold. He resurrect the deer even after he was cooked. He knew what people they are doing in the unseen. He knew what they did. They cannot hide anything from him. He knew from far away who die who live. And this is Muhammad. Swimming in a jacuzzi is not even six foot or six arms wide. The water is not even to his pubic area, full of dead dogs and women of blood from period and stinky garbage. And then when they ask him how you do such a thing, he says, the water is always pure and nothing can make it impure. This is Muhammad. And that is my Lord, the Messiah. Obviously, your prophet is not only filthy, but he is mentally ill. If a person want to clean himself, to prepare himself, to pray for Allah, it is not dead dogs or women rags from period or garbage is the way you can wash yourself to prepare yourself to meet Allah, metaphorically.
it is obvious this man is mentally ill. May the Lord have mercy in the fool. May the Lord open their eyes. We do our part to make you see. But if you decide to be blind, that is your decision. Again today, the Christians who celebrate according to the Orthodox calendar, which I believe it is the most accurate one for us as a Christians, they are celebrating the miracle would happen every year where the light comes from the empty tomb of Christ every year. Amazing miracle. Happen in such a day. So our Lord is a glorious. Our Lord is alive. Our Lord, he proved himself. Our Lord, amazing, even in the book of the devil, which is Muhammad. Even in the book of this devil, Muhammad, he could not deny how Jesus is amazing. He thought by using the amazing name of Jesus, he can fool us and make us believe in him. But we are smarter than this fool. And this is why I say, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how foolish are you? With this, I say to you, Happy Easter. Happy weekend. May the Lord bless you all. And I want to say thank you for those who support us in every way, every mean. Don't forget to download the videos. Share them with your friends. Add subtitle so everybody will learn the truth and the truth will set you free. And the Lord, he says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. And he did prove what he said. And as you see, when the Muslim want to speak about amazing miracle, they jump into Jesus. The only miracle Muhammad he made is making a billion human beings believe in such a stupid man. That is a miracle of his stupidity. And we refuse to be foolish to believe in such a filthy man. A rapist, a criminal, a child molester, you name it. We are following the living Lord. His name is holy. His act is holy. His life was holy in this earth and in heaven. Everything about him is amazing. He challenged the Jews. He says, who of you can prove me as a sinner? None dare to say so. That is our Lord. Thank you very much, everybody. May the Lord bless you and see you soon again. Happy Easter. Happy weekend. Happy life with the Lord. Let him bless your life. Let him be a part of your life. So you may be able to overcome your sin. I may be able to overcome my sin. All of us, we are sinners. And this is why we need the Lord to save us. It is not because we are great, we will be saved. But because we are following the great Lord. And there is no greater than him. And he cannot be compared to anyone. Because you follow him, you will be saved. Not because you are good. Not because you make donation to churches. Not because even you feed the children or you feed those things are good to do. You do it because you the, the good of fruit come from a good tree. But you will be saved by believing in the Messiah. And by him only, you can be saved. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.